And hey, good evening, September 28, 2022. It is officially fall. Bring your light jacket. No, not necessary. It's going to be down in the 50s, they say, by the end of the week. And, uh, and we'll enjoy that. We'll enjoy that very, very much. We are finishing up a series uh, on, uh, on grace. We've looked at grace in all of its manifest ways and enjoyed looking at it and enjoyed talking about it and enjoyed living in it. Uh, and, and we finish up with three ways that we can show God's grace. Now, the first way, uh, or show our gratitude for God's grace, is by making our lives count. You know, you know, we're not meant to stay on this earth and, and, and sit and soak and shower. We're made for a reason. God put you here for a reason. God put you here for a purpose. And if you're not fulfilling your purpose, then you're just tread water. And so, and so God, having put you here for a reason, is, uh, and that reason is to make a difference in the world. Look, you may not be able to make a difference in the world for the whole world. But you can make a difference in the world for somebody in this world. And that's all I'm going to ask you to do, to make a difference for somebody in this world. And then the second one was that we can show our gratitude for God's grace by becoming generous. Uh, if you want to know more about that, we're just going to just gloss over it. Uh, and But if you want to know more about it, go back and look at last week's. It's, it's still online. It's still up there. Uh, and take a look at last week's lesson. We talked about how Christ became poor so we could become rich. And if we and if we don't become generous, we lose our Christ likeness. And, and, and so you, 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 just bottom line, here's what it boils down. Do you trust Jesus Christ for your salvation? You know, if the answer is yes, you trust Jesus Christ for your salvation, then you can trust Jesus Christ in your finances. If you trust him enough to get you to heaven, you can, you can trust him enough to keep you alive on this earth. And here's why. We really don't own anything. Follow, follow through with me on this, okay? We really don't own everything, anything. Yet we get to use it while we're here on earth. And then it goes to somebody else. And they can use it until it breaks down or is thrown away. And when they get through with it, it goes to somebody else. So we never actually own anything. God loans it to us for 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years. But it's all his in the first place. Now, you know, if my son comes to me, uh, let's, put, let's put it my granddaughter. If my granddaughter comes to me and says, uh, uh, and says uh, Pa Bear, it's your birthday coming up. Uh, I'd like to buy you a present, but I don't have any money. I'm going to give her $10 so we'll go out and buy me a present. Now, where's the money really come in the first place? Oh, I'll open the present and say, oh, child, this is the most beautiful, sweet tater. You have a gift for picking out gifts. But who'd the money come from? God does that with us. He gives to us liberally. He gives to us uh, generously. He gives to us abundantly. And then he says... How about showing a little gratitude? How about being generous and giving yourself? How about tithe back to me? Why? You think God needs the money? Oh, no, God doesn't need the money. It's that God wants us to become like him. God wants us to be Christ-like. He doesn't want us to have stingy hearts. He wants us to have Jesus hearts, a heart that says, I just can't wait to give right there. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 32, since God loved us enough to give us his own son, won't he love us enough to take care of every one of our other needs? Now, that is a logical conclusion. We can conclude it no other way. I, I can say I love God. I can sing I love God. I, I, I can sing I trust God. I can pray that I trust God. But my wallet, my checkbook, my credit card statements, those are going to be the things that show how that show the real difference. So God wants me to become generous like him, and he wants to make my life count. Now, those are the ways you show some gratitude. And then number three, be short this week. Number three is we can show our gratitude for God's grace by sharing the good news of God's grace. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Does the most important thing, does Paul that I complete my mission, the work that the Lord Jesus gave me, to tell people the good news about God's grace. Okay, he doesn't say, 
the most important thing in life is to graduate from high school and then graduate from college and then graduate from graduate school and then get married and have a family and make a lot of money and retire. No, no, he says the most important thing in life is to fulfill our mission. If Jesus died on the cross for us and showed his grace for us so that we can fulfill our mission, if we don't, that's called a massive eternal waste. Now, part of that mission, not all of it, just a part, is to tell other people about the good news about God's grace. See, God put you on earth for a reason. I don't believe anybody's here by mistake. Occasionally, I'll have a, a, a young uh, lady or a young couple that isn't married come into my office and say, uh, and, and say, Brother Yasko, we've we, we, we've come for some counseling, you know, we're, we've been going out for X amount of time. Sometimes it's three months, sometimes it's three years and, and well, we're pregnant and we don't know what to do. Here's what I tell them. There's no such thing as an accidental child, All right? Every child that, that is born into this world is God ordained for this world. Now there can be some accidental parents. I've met a few of those. And so I tell the young lady or the young couple, don't be an accidental parent. Be an intentional parent. And, and, and God put us on this earth not to be accidental Christians, but to be intentional Christians. And, and, and so God has a mission for you that only you can fulfill. And part of that mission, once you step across the line, we had a young lady step across the line Sunday morning, is to tell somebody else about Jesus. You see, chances are you know about Jesus because of somebody else. She said, well, hang on, I've been in the Church of Christ all my life. Yeah, but there was a teacher back there that talked to you about Jesus. There was a, a preacher back there. There was a youth minister back there. There was somebody back there that cared enough about you to teach you about Jesus. And if somebody died for you, wouldn't you want to tell about it? Uh, you know, we know Christ because somebody told us, and the motivation behind everything we do here at Westbury Church of Christ is to tell people about Jesus. Jesus died for every person in Southeast Texas and all of Texas and the entire United States and on through the whole world. Now, let's be real, because this weekend, the typical, uh, the typical person where we live, the Houston metro area, on a Sunday morning, they may get up and go for a walk, and then they'll head back in, get some tea, get some lemonade, turn on the football, maybe get a can of bud or something like that, and a newspaper, and, and be relaxed, watch the ball game. Not, we're, we're, hey, we root for the Texans. We don't have high expectations, all right? So we're praying, okay, maybe they'll maintain dignity this week. Well, we'll take that. Uh, and, and, and sit there totally unaware that Jesus Christ died for them and the grace that is available, both the past and the present and in the future, totally oblivious to the fact. And if a person lives and dies without ever knowing their sins are forgiven and that there's a place for them and that there's a purpose for them, then for that person, the death of Jesus Christ was a waste. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter that the Lord doesn't want any one of us to die lost. That all of us should come to repentance. That God wants everybody in his family and everybody needs Jesus because God cares. And because God cares, we have no choice but to care. And one of the ways we show the gratitude that Jesus loved us enough to die for us is that we tell somebody else about that salvation. And we tell them the good news because people are dying without the grace of God. I want to just run a guilt trip on you for just a minute, okay? But, it's, but I promise it's a guilt trip that's worth it. And here's the question. Is there going to be anybody in heaven because of you? Or are there going to be people that are judged lost and you will see them as they go to their eternal dwelling and they will say to you, dude, couldn't you just talk to me about this a little bit? You know, God 
you say, well, I can't think of anybody. Well, start praying. God will show by. God, God will show you. Okay, God will show you that there's people in your lives. And, and if you can't, and and, uh, and as you're praying, uh, you're going to see the faces of people that need Jesus. Now, here's the thing: we are so desperate for good news. I mean, we are so desperate for good news that we will do just about anything for good news. We will run to therapists that have the latest trick. We'll run to seminars that cost tens of thousands of dollars. We'll try some thing that, that somebody, you know, I, I, I take comfort in my crystals. I just put my crystals around me. I've got rocks that I get that make me feel, hey, no, I'm sorry, it's a rock, okay? I know folks that have tried to find fulfillment in an affair or tried to work, find fulfillment in working themselves to death, or a sport, or a hobby, and there's still this big, gaping, God-shaped hole in their lives that says only the grace of God can fill it up. Look, we've got the greatest news in the world, and the, great, and the way we show that gratitude for that grace uh, is by making our own lives count, by living a life of, you ready for this? extravagant generosity and by telling as many people as we can about the good news of Jesus Christ. Been a great series. We'll start a series on prayer next week and uh, and just take a look at prayer. To, you know, in order to get prayer to work, do we have to do some religious mumbo jumbo and say a certain formula and, and you know, the, the Lord's Prayer, it, Jesus says this is not this. Jesus says this is how you should pray, not what you should pray. And so, uh, so anyway, but that'll be for next week. Let's pray. Our God, we are so grateful. I am so grateful for your grace, Father. Help me not to abuse that grace, Father. Reach me in my and my secret places, the places I've I've burned over, so that there's no feeling left there. And Father, uh, I ask that you help me be generous with those around me. Father, because you have been so generous to us. And Father, help me be bold and help the folks that are watching this be bold to share their faith with somebody else. Father, you're amazing and we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.